Chris Charm for WhereDoesGodzillaPoop.com and this is a moody mystery game. Origins. Oh wait, no it's not. It's, it's, wait, title card. Type Rider, the typographic video game. This is not to be confused with Ghost Rider because that would be terrible. Um, that was, was one particularly not good joke. Here's another not particularly good joke. Uh, this is a game about typography and the history thereof, uh, which means that if nothing else, then this must be the rarest of things, a well-written video game. I let that sink in. That was a joke about fonts. Um, wow. Whoop. This game has one of those level select screens where you just run around as you would normally um, to choose levels, but it can kind of get in the way where all you have to do is just be in a certain space to select a level happily. You can also just go in here and uh, choose from uh, the levels that there are on offer. I'm going to jump into here. Um, yeah, the idea behind this is... Oh, you can't do it from there. You can only choose chapters you've been in before. How annoying. How annoying. I don't want to go into Dido. So the idea is here, you're, you're controlling these two dots, these two full stops, these two would-be quotation marks. No, I don't want to go in that level. God, I've already finished it. Let me into Futura. Won't let me open until I get them out. Um, the menu is quite annoying. That is uh, my one down point about this game. Um, the idea behind this is you're controlling these two dots. Are they full stops? Are they trying to be quotation marks? Actually, some of the puzzles kind of revolve around finding a third dot, so you kind of make ellipses, which I think is the point. Um, and the really interesting thing here is that this is a platformer, yes, about typography. Um, and that's where it gets its visual cues from, and, well, some of its gameplay cues as well. Um, so if we load up here, uh, as you can see, lots of letters floating around uh, representing the particular styles uh, that the game is trying to get across. Um, but what's interesting about this is, is more than just a visual gimmick, um, Typewriter is... wow, okay, this is tricky. Um, Typewriter is legitimately a kind of interactive museum exhibit. Uh, rather than just a straight-up platform game. And um, it's clearly made by people who know an awful lot about this stuff. Um, so as we go around, there we go. You're collecting these little stars, which actually gives you uh, more information uh, about uh, different figures in the history and different moments in the history of, of typography. Uh, so it's talking about the ty uh, futurists here. As you might have seen earlier on, uh, there was a little bit about the Gothics, where you kind of read about the creation of the printing press and stuff like this. So it's, it's really interesting that this is an educational game, first and foremost, but it's kind of an edu educational I don't know, I suppose most edutainment is kind of targeted towards kids and, you know, basic education. Um, but this is very sort of adult grounded and hey, if you have an interest in graphic design, uh, you'll learn about it through this game. Um, but, you know, it, it's, it, it's very adult and very, very in-depth about its, its topic and very knowledgeable, which is interesting. Um, so, you know, I mean, these are just uh, text logs. Uh, but, you know, you get the idea here. Uh, I'm kind of reading this stuff for the first time as well, so it's kind of talking about cubism and things like that. Um, so far, we've kind of gone through the creation of the, the printing press and the Renaissance and the counter-Renaissance and burning books and, and things like that. And uh, now I suppose we're, we're into the 20th century. Um, and yeah, so beyond just well, simple uh, text logs detailing history, you've also got uh, those visual elements kind of deciding uh, parts of the level layout and the level design, uh, which is interesting. Um, jump, jump. 
Uh, I'm holding basically each side of the screen to move and then whichever side of the screen you're not holding onto to move uh, you... Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Okay. I look really stupid. I kind of thought... I don't know what I thought. Um, whichever side of the screen you're not holding to move, you, you tap to jump. So, um, this is on iOS by the way. Uh, so that's kind of a typical control system for, for, pla for simple platformers on iOS. Works pretty well here, uh, for the most part. Um, the trickiness is in that you're controlling kind of two bodies at once that are tied to one another. Um, they only very rarely, if ever, kind of make use of that from a gameplay perspective. It's it's more just, I don't know, the, the gimmick of what you're controlling uh, more than anything else. Um, but this is pretty interesting. Um, this kind of rolling around letters and, and use of those rounded G's uh, is something that uh, I haven't actually seen that much of in this game so far. Uh, and that's pretty cool. Um, because I think for the most part, there you go. If I have a complaint with this so far, it's that it's using typography, yes, in an interesting way visually. This game looks great. Um, I'm trying to let you see as much of it as possible in this video, but it's not doing too well because I'm kind of being crap at the same time. Um, but, the, I mean, a lot of the game so far has been kind of using typography as a theme, but, but really essentially um, as a visual theme and, and not as a gameplay theme. Uh, I mean, there's some parts where it will be, oh, hey, then the printing press was invented and a giant printing press will try and crush you. Um, but... You know, really, it's a lot of the game so far has been crap. Has been using um, the typography theme to convey what is a, a pretty standard uh, indie platformer, kind of in the vein of a Limbo or, or something like that. Um, but actually, that said, so far this this level's looking pretty cool. These, this futurist stuff is looking pretty cool, um, and it, it's it's really a very complete history uh, that it's it's trying to present. Um, so here we go, caught another text log there. European avant garde, blah blah blah. Um, yeah, it's really trying to present a, a pretty complete history to the layman about typography, um, which is cool. I said it goes all the way back to the tutorial, talks about cave paintings and, and things like that, and uh, it kind of goes right on up, kind of after here, as I understand it, it's going to talk, whoops, it's going to talk about, you know, pixel art and things like that as well. Um, so you have every other level here, uh, you have a puzzle to solve, where as I mentioned, you're kind of guiding this white dot along as well. Crap, I thought I needed to collect that, but I don't. Um, in order to make a, an, an elliptical gate, I suppose, which, which lets you move on to the next section. Um, so there's, there's some kind of, I don't know, creative uses of, of visual styles. And I, I suppose for a game about graphic design, typography, text design, and things like that. Um, it's really important that it, it does look really cool, and it does look amazing. And the soundtrack's pretty cool as well. Let's sit back and listen for a little bit. When the music stops, because it's loading. <laughs> oh, no. This kind of brings to mind almost a... Oh no! Almost a Sesame Street animation, but for grown-ups. 
<laughs> in a way, with all these letters bouncing around and, and kind of interacting with one another, and you have to use their physical properties to, to advance. Um, you can also see as I'm doing this stuff, I'm collecting little letters. Uh, and actually, oh, how do I get that? I can't go through there. I have to go down. No. That's kind of a leap of faith and not particularly cool. Um, as I go through here, I'm collecting letters um, which are non-essential things. It's just that uh, for completionists, for the completionists among you, as I screw up again, um, then you kind of want to collect in each level, crap, each, uh, each letter within a font. And there's also... I mean, the, the letters within the font, as you've been seeing watching this, are um, pretty easy to find. Uh, but oh, I guess I have to stay inside here. Uh, but the trick is there's also an ampersand tucked away in each, uh, in each section uh, or in each level. And that's a lot trickier to find. And there's some parts like that biography or that text log. Um, oh, I was supposed to do that. Can I go around the other way now? I want to get that thing. I'm a completionist too. Okay, one well minute. So yeah, some of the ampersands are, are tricky to find and, you know, some of those text logs uh, can be tough. Um, so you see, I've only managed... Was there? I think I managed to find... Not that one. In Dido, I think. I managed to find the ampersand in there. Um, so, you know, I mean, there's trophies attached to that kind of stuff uh, for the people that like that kind of thing. Um, that's there for you, for the completists. And uh, I kind of paused in the wrong spot there. So, yeah, I mean, it's um, it's really cool. Obviously, it's, it's visually arresting. It's super stunning. Uh, it sounds neat. Um, it is well written, haha, and it's um, it's really great to be, you know, clearly, crap, crap, crap. Clearly, this has been de developed with with people that have a passion for the subject matter, and um, that's really, really great to see. Um, you know, it's it's really interesting to to play a game. You know, and any kind of educational uh, video game geared towards adults, uh, let alone something with such an interesting um, kind of topic that you wouldn't think would um, would sit well with video games, but it is actually, in fact, um, pretty cool and pretty accomplished at what it does. The problem is, it's just there's just this kind of mild dissonance, you know, between gameplay in some respects. I think probably actually this video is, is either the best or the worst example of, of gameplay in uh, Typewriter so far in that it is really pretty well suited to the visual style. I know that the section before this was, was kind of focused on the Clarendon section uh, which was kind of developed I suppose in in the Wild West in America and stuff, and it was just kind of used as an excuse for kind of bad minecart sections, you know, and, and a period where there was a gun trying to uh, sort of crosshairs displayed on screen, trying to shoot you as you move through a salon and stuff. Um, and it just didn't really feel particularly convincing. So, I mean, it it, it kind of depends and then I mean on the flip side here I'm dying an awful lot and it, it doesn't it's never really entirely clear sometimes what's what's being expected of you um, you know that that red shape just just killed me there it, I mean sometimes it's like you look at it again and go ah uh, it's, you know sometimes it, it's not the most convincing video game uh, as much of a great idea as it is and, and as much of a great piece of, of educational software perhaps that it is um, 
Uh, it's just a little bit frustrating. Scenes like this are frustrating. Um, it's, uh, it's not quite there. Um, but yeah, a, a really great idea, if nothing else. So I try and get through here and see if we can. Ah, uh, it's that little movement that's not quite right. And if it is the case that um, you know, and you you control two dots in this game just because they want to make a joke about you know dot 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 and ellipses, uh, then um, that's kind of a little bit disappointing because for the most part it kind of makes the gameplay a lot uh, you know pretty frustrating. Uh, oh, okay. Go, 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 move that T. Move the T, move the U. That's it. No, oh, no. Okay, that's gonna keep that place. I actually find these sections a lot more enjoyable in a way than uh, most of the main platforming sections, but uh, yeah, I'm pretty well. Um, perhaps not entirely successful at, at what it sets out to do, but what it does set out to do is, is really cool and it's, it's well worth a little bit of your time, I think. Uh, check it out, you might like it, it's very pretty, yay. There was supposed to be music there, but, you know, the capture software's fuck screwed up and crapped out a little bit. But, yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty. It's quite good. It's pretty good. It's typewriter. It's on our iOS right now. Where does Godzilla Thanks for watching. Bye.